All right. Good evening. Or oh, here in London, it is evening. I'm uh, looking out the window. It looks like it's sunset uh, here in uh, London. Uh, it's it's actually quite pretty. Uh, I'm right in uh, Chinatown in uh, Soho, uh, uh, London. It's uh, it's a, it was a beautiful day, freezing cold. Oh my God! I didn't realize it got this cold in London. It was in the uh, in the uh, low 30s today, so uh, really, really cold. Coming from Puerto Rico, it was kind of a shock to the system. We'll see if I can avoid uh, getting my uh, getting a cold, uh, getting sick with all the uh, changes in um, in the weather. But I'm excited to be here in England. I'll be here. This is a long trip uh, for for one place. I'm kind of static for for 11 nights. Uh, tomorrow I go to Oxford. So I'll spend two nights in Oxford, but other than that, uh, I'll be in London for nine nights, which is longer than I typically stay in one place uh, anywhere in the world, even at home. So um, yeah, it's good to be here. We got a lot of things going on. 12 high school talks starting tomorrow with uh, Westminster High School, probably the best uh, academic high school in uh, in the UK. And then um, Going to Oxford for two two high schools in Oxford uh, tomorrow evening, and then uh, two high schools north of Oxford in the Midlands uh, on Tuesday, and then um, you know we'll we'll, we'll see uh, we'll see. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to answer questions that were posed by Patreon contributors. And who were voted on by uh, by Patreon, other Patreon contributors. So, I think if you give twenty five dollars a month or more at Patreon.com, you're on Brook Show. Patreon.com slash you're on Brook Show. Uh, you can propose a topic for me to talk about. And I think if you give more than ten dollars a month or something like that, I'm, I'm not sure exactly. Uh, you get a vote on them now. Uh, we'll see. We might actually get to cover all the topics, but I'm going to start with the topic that got the highest votes and kind of work downwards so that if, if indeed, uh, for some reason, the, um, uh, we don't get through them, at least, uh, at least we got, we got this, uh, we got the ones that got the most votes. So, uh, you get some credit for, uh, for getting the most votes. All right. Um. I hope uh, there wasn't a stuttering there in the video. It's it's hard to tell. Uh, somebody says uh, it's a nice hotel room. Yeah, it's a very nice hotel room. I'm at the uh, W Hotel in Leicester Square. I like W's, and and this is a particularly nice uh, W. And they treat me well, so they give me. This is a, a a particularly large room for this hotel. The standard rooms are tiny and and have weird configurations. This one is is a reasonable s uh, size and actually for the rest of my trip after i come back from oxford uh, they, they've given me a suite so uh, it's um given that i stay a hundred nights a year a hundred or more nights a year i have for the last i don't know five six seven years at starwood hotels which w is a part of they treat me well you know they they, they should i'm probably one of the best best customers in the world all right, let's get down to the questions. I'm not going to follow in the chat much. There's just too much going on, uh, but let's let's start. So the first the first question was asked by Ryan, and uh, uh, this is the question. Personal values, whims, and human values. How do personal values differ from whims? How does an individual identity identify his objective personal values, or can he choose them? And how does he morally pursue them? particular type of productive effort, hobbies, etc. How do the values we hold as individuals differ from the values that we all share as a fact of being human? So that's a great question, right? A great question. So in a sense, you've got certain values that are universal values, the, the, the values that are good for all human beings, moral values. Moral values are universal values. Honesty, integrity, productiveness, reason and rationality. These are moral values and they are consistent for every human being. Every human being has these values. And how do we know that? By studying what is required for human existence. For human beings to survive, for human beings to thrive, for human beings to flourish. All human beings, under pretty much any circumstances, they must 
use reason. They must be rational. They must be honest. And, you know, I did a whole show on honesty. So, so I think you know what I mean by then. So we're not going to talk too much about the kind of universal values, the moral values. And it's not just the seven, uh, you know, the three cardinal values, uh, reason, purpose, self-esteem. It can certainly be certain subsidiary values under those values that are still that are still universal or, or the same with virtue. So, for example, um, in the objectivist ethics, courage is not a uh, one of the seven virtues that Ayn Rand identifies. But I think Ayn Rand would say courage is a virtue. It's just a subsidiary virtue, probably under integrity, right? So a person who has integrity needs to have the courage to, to, to have the integrity, right? Courage is, is necessary, you know, to achieve integrity. So they are, there's a whole set of, of universal values. Uh, healthy food is a universal value for all human beings. Now, what is healthy might be different for different human beings, depending on your biology, maybe depending on your genome. We don't know exactly. The science is still working on that. But there's going to be a universal set of things and, and it, think about it the other way around. Poison is bad pretty much for everybody. Everybody suffers if they eat cyanide. So those are the universal values. Those are the values that are necessary, necessary for the achievement of uh, happiness, for achievement of flourishing, for the p achievement of human success. And, and a good starting point for what the universal values and virtues are is the objectivist ethics. It's, it's uh, on the value side. Uh, reason, purpose, self-esteem. On the virtue side, it's uh, it's a seven virtues. But I also recommend reading uh, Tara Smith's The Virtuous Egoist, where she talks about other virtues and other values and how they are connected to the main ones and uh, to, to the extent to which they are universal uh, uh, on, or, or not. You know, so, so, so that's point number one. But the real question, I think, that's being asked is not so much about, there we go, we, we, we're stuttering a little bit, it's not so much about these universal values, but I think it's about personal values and differentiating between personal values and whims. So, and I think what you mean, uh, Ryan, by human values, I think you mean by that values that are necessary for all human beings, and I would call those kind of the universal human values, the, the, the things that are universal to everybody, uh, to all human beings. So what about personal values and whims? First, how do we differentiate between personal values and whims? Well, whims are things that we want, but the, the only reason we want them is because we have, because we feel like it. That, that's the essence of a whim. The whim is a feeling. There's no thought given to it. There's no consideration. There are no facts being put forward. It just... You feel like it, so you do it. That, that's what a whim means. It just means a, 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 I don't know what the technical definition of whim, I probably should have, I probably should have uh, uh, thought about that in advance, but it's, it's, it's instantaneous, it's, uh, it's emotional, it's not thought out, it's not reasoned, it's not a product of rational thinking. Right? So, I'd say whims, therefore, are out. When shouldn't, particularly in anything important, when shouldn't function based on emotion. When shouldn't pursue just things that make one feel good, independent of everything else, without having thought them through, without having figured out, are they harmful to me? Or are they good for me? Because if they're harmful to you, then you're going to suffer if you just do them. If you don't take into account the fact, the knowledge that this is harmful, you know, um, I feel like I feel like taking the cocaine, right? Cocaine is going to give me a high. I feel like getting a high. Making the cocaine a value in that situation is based on whim because what would happen if it was based on reason? To be based on reason would say, okay, Yes, I would get a high from the cocaine, and that feels good. Let's not deny the fact that it feels great to, to, get a, to get a sniff of cocaine. But what are the consequences? 
What are the consequences to my health? What are the consequences to my mind? What are the consequences? What might I do when I'm on the high? Uh, what are the consequences if I get addicted to my wallet, to my integrity, to everything that I do? So, a whim is an emotion that is not being thought through, that is not being integrated, that is that just stands on its own and, and, and that we reject as any kind of value. It's just a whim, and it should be avoided. All right. We've been talking about whims. Now, what would personal values be? Personal values are values that you want, the things that you want, that you desire, that you care for, but that have passed the test of reason, that you have thought about them, that you have validated them in a sense that they are pro your life, that they are life-sustaining values, that they're not harmful to your life, that they're actually beneficial to your life and consistent and integrate with your other values. They're not just disintegrated uh, based on pure emotions, but actually values that are consistent with your moral values and consistent with your other non moral values, with the values that you have generally in life, the things that you want, the things that you believe in, the things you desire. So personal values are those things you want that are rational, that you have properly prioritized in, in a sense of a hierarchy of values, that you've placed them within a hierarchy, that you've determined how important they are relative to other values that you hold in life. They're fully integrated into everything, everything that you do and everything that you believe in and everything that you hold into all your other values. And importantly, again, importantly, you've placed them in a hierarchy. So, you know, you want a Ferrari. And yeah, there's nothing wrong about wanting a Ferrari, and it can be rational to own a Ferrari. But how much money do you make? Um, is owning a Ferrari going to preclude owning a home? And is owning a home more important to you than owning a Ferrari? And again, rationally, not in terms of which one generates the greatest emotion, but which one rationally is more important to you, which one rationally will make your life better, which one rationally will enhance your life. And if owning a home is more important than owning a Ferrari, then the home has to be the primary value, not the Ferrari. The Ferrari has to be lower in the hierarchy of values and you might never get to it. You might never get to it, but that's okay, right? That's what a proper hierarchy is. And what is the standard for the hierarchy? The standard is your flourishing, the standard of your ability to attain success, uh, your ability to attain happiness, your ability to live the best life that you can live. That's the standard by which you determine where in the hierarchy of values each value needs to be. So again, you've got certain universal values. You've got certain values that are right at the top, that are most important, they're most crucial. And that are the values that you must always make sure that everything else you choose must integrate into them. So here's a great way to think about it. Your personal values must be values that integrate into the universal values with their universal values. So first and foremost, they must be rational. They can't, for example, it can't be a value that contradicts uh, honesty that contradicts integrity or that contradicts your purpose which for most people is their career so i you know i i love the beach i want to go to the beach every day you know and that could be a whim but you do love the beach but in the context of your universal values your cardinal values your purpose your career I'll have to find time on the weekend to go to the beach. And even then, you know, maybe if I'm in the beginning of the career, I'm working seven days a week. Uh, I'm working seven days a week. And then I'm going to have to, uh, oops, the light went flying. Uh, if I'm working seven days a week, I might not be able to go to the beach at all, even on the weekend. So that is a value that I'm going to have to delay. 
So you, you set the hierarchy based on how important the value is relative to your flourishing, relative to your success, and relative to the, the cardinal values that you hold, the, the universal values, the, 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 the values that are most important and most crucial to your survival. Right? So um, let's see if I've covered everything. Um, how does an individual identify his objective personal values? Well, you've got to introspect. You've got to figure out, what do I enjoy? But you also can't limit yourself to the things that you know. You have to broaden. You have to go try things out. Hey, some people really like, um, I don't know, what, what, what would it be, right? Some people really like watching sports. I've never really tried it. I don't know. So, you know, let me try it. Let me learn the sport. Let me figure it out. There seems to be some value. It's people I respect, people I, I you know, I have some respect for. They seem to enjoy it. And, and you go and try it. And you go and see, is it for me? Is it something that I really can enjoy? And if I learn about it, will I learn more? So don't limit yourself to just your experiences. Hey, some people seem to enjoy really, really good food, expensive food. You know, maybe once in a while, I'll go to a fancy restaurant and see if I can learn to appreciate that. It's like, it's like, but it's like, you know, people who like, to me, I drink wine. I kind of, I kind of like it, but I can't tell the difference between all these wines. But there are people who, who decide that they want to learn about wine and they go and they learn about wine. And, and some of them probably drop off because at the end of the day, they sip all the different wines and they all taste the same. And it doesn't turn out that it's that important to them. And they drop off. Some people really make this a major hobby. And they, and they really become aficionados at it. So you can learn, you know, your personal values. You can, you can try, you can experiment, you can go out there and, and figure it out, right? It's just like, it's just like music, right? So um, we all grew up, grow up in a certain kind of music, but who said that the music we grew up on, whether you grew up in the 80s or 90s or 2000s or whether you like country music or whatever, how do you know that that's the best music for you? How do you know that that is the most enjoyable music for you? Because it, you grew up with it, so it's got a certain place in your heart because you associate it with certain memories of growing up. But music is much more profound than that. Your music can have much more of a greater impact than that. So I would argue that one of the things I don't think people do enough of is develop, develop, objective personal values in aesthetics in the arts you listen to different types of music particularly let's say classical music uh, you know which which at least some people say is really really good and really really interesting you've heard people argue that you've heard people say it then then go try take a course in college on uh, about uh, you know about art uh, try to appreciate it, take an art appreciation course, a music appreciation course. So, so personal values are ju not just something you have; it's something you can develop, it's something you can uh, learn, it's something you can gain. You can gain personal values. So, um, so again, the framework, the thing you integrate into always, are the universal values, are the values that objectively necessary for human flourishing and then everything else has to be consistent and integrate with those values they have to be common and then you have to put them in a hierarchy what is most important and what's the least important so you have to have an objective hierarchy of personal values where at the top are your universal values right so uh, you know family family might be uh, you know, your parents, your siblings, you know, you might love them, you might care for them, they might be really, really important, or they might not be. You have to decide that rationally, you have to assess, do I enjoy their company? Is it a benefit for my life to be around them? Uh, you know, or is it harmful? Do, do, they, do, do they just cause me pain, emotional pain? And, and therefore, I should spend less time around them or not spend any time around them at all. So every single thing Every single one of your values, you should question, ask the questions. Why do I like this? Is it consistent with my other values? Is it consistent with my goal to succeed and flourish and be happy with my life? And, you know, is it rational? 
Is it something that really does promote my life? So that's, and then of course, in terms of your individual objective values, personal objective values, go out there and seek new ones. Look at what other people enjoy, people who are, friend, who are friends of yours, who, who you admire or respect or, or are friendly with. Yeah, check it out. You don't have to accept it because they do. I'm not arguing for second-handedness. I'm just saying if other people enjoy it, maybe you will. Go try it. Test it out. Figure it out. All right. So um, technical problems look like YouTube has dropped. But, uh, I, so I'm going to end here. Uh, we'll try to load just this uh, this uh, single video up on, and we will get to the other um, the other questions that people had uh, on a future show. All right, thank you, thanks for listening. Sorry for the technical difficulties. Uh, this is your run the run book show. You've been listening to object, uh, living objectivism, and you know if you like if you like this if you like these answers if you'd like to ask questions yourself. It, you'd like to vote on the questions being asked. If you'd just like to support the show, then uh, go to patreon.com slash Euron Brook Show. Patreon.com slash Euron Brook Show. And um, support the show. All right. Signing off from London. It's Euron Brook. Bye, everybody. <laughs>